What's up, you lovely people, and welcome back. Today, we're talking about my complete process going from Premiere to Resolve for color grading. This is a really popular topic, so I wanted to make a complete video that'll hopefully help you guys out. I'm gonna have a lot more color grading tips and videos coming out, so make sure that you're subscribed and you hit that little bell so that you don't miss any videos going forward. Also, if you're not sure what Resolve is or you've never worked with that editing software, I have an intro video that I'll link up here. It's really powerful for color grading and I highly suggest that you guys check it out. Roll that intro sequence. All right, so let's start with some basics. First of all, workflows are gonna vary for you depending on what kind of footage you're working with, how much your computer can handle, and where in the editing process you prefer to do your color grading. My round trip is different for the different projects that I work on, but almost always involves sending more footage to resolve than I'll probably need in the end, then cutting it down and refining it once it comes back into Premiere. If I'm working on a YouTube video, it's usually scripted, so I'm gonna send over all the clips first to be color graded because I know exactly what I need. That way, I'm working with the finished clips so that I can quickly assemble everything once it gets back to Premiere. If I'm working on a film project, generally I'll do a first pass or at least get down to my selects so that I'm only sending over what I need to get color graded into Resolve, because if I don't, it usually ends up being too much footage to color grade. Either way, the process is gonna look fairly similar regardless of what order you do it in. Let's get some definitions out of the way first. Today, I'll primarily be talking about XML and EDL files. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. Essentially, you're turning your edits and footage into key markers that can be interpreted by different programs. EDL is an edit decision list. It comes from the old days of shooting film, but practically translates to the same thing as XML. The big difference for us working digitally is that EDL will make you export out a whole nother video file while XML works with the original or raw files. I'd rather export and process all of the video clips as few times as possible in order to preserve quality. All right, step one, let's prepare our timeline. All right, so first thing I do is I duplicate my timeline in order to have a backup and label it appropriately as XML export. It's important to be organized so that everything lines up when you're done. Next, we're gonna flatten our timeline. You'll wanna reduce everything to one video track to make it easier and remove all transitions, lower thirds, titles, and any motion graphics that you have. Finally, to ensure it's done, I'd highlight all clips and right click and hit remove attributes. Also, make sure you unlink and delete all of your audio. Since we're only color grading in Resolve, it'll make it easier to transfer your files and bring them back without having to worry about audio sync issues. Key thing to note so far is that I'm working with these clips in a sequence that matches their native aspect ratio and resolution. I'll be creating a final sequence later with a deliverable aspect ratio, and that's to avoid any sort of translation problems. I also don't add any black bar images to my videos. I 100% disagree with that. I'll create a final sequence at the end and export in the resolution that I want to show on screens, which will automatically create the mats. Adding black bar image files is just, nah, no. Let's move on to step number two, which is exporting your XML and bringing it into Resolve. Now in Premiere, you'll go to File, Export, Final Cut Pro XML, choose a place to save it. Let's be organized like good editors and make a new folder so we can easily find it. I'll title mine XML Export and save it there. If you export an EDL file, you'll go to File, Export, EDL. It'll come up with this dialog menu and basically ask you what video and audio tracks you wanna export and render save it somewhere, go through the render process, and then you're good to go. All right, so now we're in Resolve. I import on the media page, head up to File, Import Timeline, that's important, and then choose Import AAF EDL XML or Control Shift I for shortcut. Navigate to where you saved that XML file, open it up. It'll load your clips exactly as you had them on your Premiere Pro timeline. Sequence settings are usually okay as default, but just take a look and make sure that they match our project settings, like in this case, making sure it's still a 23.976 timeline. Step three, color grading and then exporting back to Premiere. Okay, now that all of our clips are in, go ahead and head to the color tab and you can start your color grading. For the purposes of this video, I'm not gonna show you how to color grade your clips. I can do a video on that later on. Leave a comment down below if that's something that you'd like to see, what I do when I color grade my clips or how to color grade in general. But just be sure, like I said, to subscribe and hit that bell because I'm gonna have plenty of color grading videos coming out in the near future. 
All right, so once you color grade all of your clips, let's head over to the delivery tab. At the top, you'll see the render settings. Scroll over and choose Premiere XML, browse for a location, and once again, let's make a new folder with our export and XML so that way we can easily find it when we go back to Premiere. All right, so here's the part where you have to be aware of the kind of footage that you're working with. That's gonna determine the type of codec that you export this out with. That's way beyond the scope of this video and can get very technical, although I can make a tutorial on that. So if that's something that you'd like to see, once again, let me know down in the comments below and then we can make a video on that as well. For what I do, I'm gonna export out DNX HR 4441010 bit. Since I film in 1080p, I'm gonna leave that there. Everything else, I'm gonna leave pretty much the same. Since we aren't working with audio files, I do page over to audio and turn off export audio. It seems to save on file size when I do it, and these are usually pretty big files, so make sure you have space, otherwise your render's gonna fail. If you aren't working with too much space on your hard drives, then you can export out MP4 files, which are more compressed and lesser quality, but they are much smaller in size. If you're working with quality files though, I would export out in a codec that has a little bit higher quality. All right, so back in Premiere, let's create a new bin and label it DaVinci Export, go File, Import, find your XML and open that. It'll dump all of the color graded footage in a new sequence, which I usually move to the sequence bin and rename it. You can then take it, timeline stack, and copy over all of these clips to your editing timeline to make sure everything matches. All right, last step, you're gonna have to bring back all of your transitions, motion graphics, and any other elements that you're using. And that's it, that's how I round trip all of my footage from Premiere to Resolve. From here, I usually then go through and finish my edit and then export my final format from Premiere. All right, so I know that video was longer and more technical than some of my other videos. So thank you if you stuck through all the way to the end. If there's something you didn't quite understand, then go back and rewatch this video, but it'll probably take you a few times doing this back and forth before you're 100% comfortable with the whole process. It's been amazing being able to color grade all of my clips in Resolve and getting to use the powerful color grading tools that Resolve has, but then being able to come back into Premiere and be able to edit really fast and have all of my saved presets and export settings, as well as all of my keybinds that I use for quickly editing in Premiere. This really has become a seamless part of my editing workflow, and it's been amazing to achieve these amazing looks that I can get in Resolve. So, Make sure you give this video a like, leave a comment, share this with someone, subscribe, hit that bell. Until next time, go out and create something. I'll see you in the next one. La revedere.